Hey guys, it's Andrea from VW Family Farm. I came outside to film a video for you and there's a rabbit out of its cage. So Lane is chasing it, trying to catch it. And I thought, why not grab the camera and video this? This is just classic footage. So I'm gonna take you along. It was right back here. Is it? Yeah. Lane caught it. What, what were you out here doing when you figured out there's a rabbit out? Fixing the barn because Katie was getting out. Who's Katie? That nuts so white dog. <laughs> our great Pyrenees. We look up and she's in the back pasture. So Lane's our Mr. Fix It and... Mr. Bleed Your Finger It. What'd you do to your finger? Hit it with a hammer. Well, that wasn't smart. I wasn't intending to. Did you get Katie back in? Yeah. Now you caught the rabbit. Now on to what this real video is about. All right, guys, so what I really came out here to talk to you about is lard. So today I'm gonna take you in my kitchen, but I couldn't resist starting out out here outside, I'm out here by the pigs. I don't know if y'all can see them. They're eating away. But anyway, I wanted to talk to you about rendering lard. It's something I do in the fall or sometimes in the winter. It's the main ingredient in my lye soap I make from our goat's milk that I also milk from our goats. Um, and also, there's a couple reasons I wanted to talk to you about. We raise Old Spot. Some of you know that. That's the breed we raise. I wanted to talk to you about why do we raise that breed. They're very cute, but that is not the reason we raise them. Their babies are super adorable. But the main reasons we raise them are for their marbling in their meat. They have really good fat on their meat. Um, they grow large. We get a lot of meat off of them. They're very efficient to raise. We have them fed and uh, ready to go to the butcher in eight months. So it's very cost efficient for us. Very good quality meat. And also, they do not root up our pastures. I'm going to take you over here for a second. So here's mama and daddy pig. They're getting their breakfast. This are born our sow. As you can see, they're out here with some of my, my cows and calves and the bull. They're behind barbed wire. This had hot wire around it at one time, but the cows have tore it up and knocked it down. So the pigs are trained to a hot wire, but there's not even a hot wire up here anymore. It's just, as you can see, it's just a barbed wire fence. We've put one strand of hot wire up at the bull's level because he was trying to get over with my milk cows, but there's no hot wire here for the pigs, and they do not tear this land up. It's not all rooted up. They'll make a waller spot sometimes, like that one right there, but you can see there's grass growing. They haven't tilled this up. Now, if you're looking for a pig to like till your garden, you can definitely get those, but these are a heritage breed pig that, that do not root much. You can see they've got a much shorter snout than a lot of pigs. Um, anyway, it's just what we prefer for the way that they don't tear our land up and also for their meat. So when pigs are out in the sun like these are, their, their fat will be full of vitamin D. And then in turn, when you render that down and eat that, it's very good for you. So let's head in the kitchen. So we're back here in the kitchen. I'm gonna show you how I take the fat we get from the slaughterhouse and turn that into lard. And also, I got out a pack of pork chops we just got back from having some of our pigs processed and I wanted to show you that. Okay, so this is a four pack of some of our pork chops, bone-in chops. And like I was telling you, we raised this breed specifically for their meat. So you can see the fat around each pork chop that's very good for you. These particular pigs even have fat marbled in their meat. It's not like a dry, pork with no fat content to it so that that's one of the main reasons we raise this breed and then if you have pigs processed you can request to get the fat back i'm sure you can do it at your slaughterhouse it's not something they just automatically give you at our slaughterhouse and a lot of people don't ask for it don't even want it but if we request it sometimes we get ours and some of our customers that don't want it they'll give it to us so i'm going to show you some of what i'm starting with so i'm going to turn all of this into lard right now it's just big chunks of fat so let's get started okay this is super easy to do there's nothing really to it i'm just going to take this fat 
and I'm gonna chunk it up a little bit just because it's gonna start kind of melting faster if I do that. A lot of people do this different ways. I use the crock pot. Some people will do this in the oven, but I'm gonna tell you the reason I don't. As this starts melting, there's little pieces in here that have, that have meat. That's why you're rendering this down. You wanna get this out. They will start popping and sizzling and you will have, if you get your oven too hot, which is easy to do, you will have grease splattering all over your oven and it makes a mess. So if you do it in something like the crock pot, it just contains the mess um, and that's just why I use it. So anyway, I'm gonna be back with you. I'm gonna get all this chopped up and I'll be back. Okay, so I got it all chopped up. It's ready, it's in the crock pot. Let me show you that. Okay, so you can see I just chunked it up. It's in pretty big chunks. You can do that as small as you want. You want to cut it up a little bit. I have just thrown it in um, in huge chunks like comes out of the packages, but it takes so much longer to get started going. So this just jump starts it. I've got these on low, as you can see. Uh, it's, it's probably going to take quite a few hours to get done. So like I said, this is going to be going for quite a while. This is morning time, like nine o'clock. This is probably at least going to be going till tonight, maybe tomorrow morning. Just the longer you let it go, the more of the lard renders down and you've just got the little pieces of meat or um, that's left in it that you can strain out. Some people eat those, some people don't. So use your own judgment on that, whatever you want to do. Um, like I said, I use this as my main ingredient in making soap. It makes wonderful soap and the soap is very moisturizing. You don't even feel like you need lotion after using it. So I love that about it. You can also use it in cooking. It's a really good healthy fat to use, especially, um, now let me say this, the quality of your pig and how you raise your pork is gonna determine the quality of your lard. So just going and buying some cheap lard at Walmart is not gonna be the same quality as rendering your own from a healthy pig you've raised naturally. But it's wonderful to use if you make pie crust, biscuits, or I like to use it to saute vegetables in. It gives stuff a really good flavor. It cooks things really well in a cast iron skillet, so. Okay, this is just one of those days. Sometimes I have a day where I just spend most of the morning in the kitchen and it looks like this is gonna be one of those days. So I've got another recipe for you and it's gonna involve the Instant Pot and I think you're gonna like it. So let me just show you what my kitchen looks like right now. It kinda looks like a bomb went off. Okay, I was showing you about rendering lard. So I got that going here. I've got tea making for kombucha. I've got elderberry syrup simmering. There's our dirty breakfast dishes. We'll just keep it real. I'm straining milk for my milk customers. Got that lined up, gotta put that up. But I've got an extra gallon right here. So, what I'm gonna show you is how I make thick raw milk yogurt. So let's get to it. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this Instant Pot. I'm gonna let you watch down here. I'm gonna put it on, mine has a yogurt function if I can find it. Yep, right here. Okay, so I'm gonna set this, and if I hit adjust, it's gonna say boil, okay? And that's what I want it to do. So I'm gonna let that, it's gonna flash for a minute, and then it's gonna start, and that that's where I'm gonna start with this, okay? Okay, now here's the key to making thick raw milk yogurt, because if you've ever made raw milk yogurt, you know it tends to be thin. I'm gonna take a couple of cups of my raw milk, Okay, so here's the secret. I'm gonna take two tablespoons of gelatin. And I've only, remember, I've only got like two cups of milk in here right now. So I'm only really heating up two cups. So that's what's gonna keep this raw. Okay, now you've got to whisk this because you don't, you set it on boil, remember? You don't want your milk to scorch, but you've also gotta get this gelatin dissolved because if not, it's not really gonna thicken your yogurt. You're just gonna have clumps of gelatin in the bottom. So you're gonna need to whisk for a minute. I've never had to actually bring this to a boil because as soon as it starts getting heated up a little bit, that gelatin's gonna dissolve and that's all you're looking for. Okay. I'm just gonna lift my pot up 
and you can kind of see down in the bottom of this pot uh, the gelatin kind of glistens I guess you'd say you're gonna be able to tell when you stop seeing little bitty pearls of it or if, if you're using a spoon bring a spoonful up and see if you see little pearls of it shining in there when you can't see it anymore you're good to go and just by putting a couple cups this doesn't take long at all okay next step I'm done whisking let me bring you over here because I want to show you what to push okay so I'm gonna hit cancel because I do not want to boil all of this milk Okay, now I'm gonna press yogurt again. And I'm gonna hit adjust because it's still on boil. And I'm gonna press it again until it says normal. You can see every time I press adjust, this is changing from high pressure, less, normal. So I'm gonna put it on normal, but I am going to turn this, I'm actually gonna do this for 24 hours. The longer you do it, the more milk sugars it's going to eat the, and as it cultures. And so this is Trim Healthy Mama, Gaps, all those uh, friendly if you do it for 24 hours. So, okay. Next step, I'm going to dump the rest of my milk, which is going to be cold. This is not necessarily cold because I just milked this out of the cow. So this is actually somewhat lukewarm but yours is probably going to be cold and that's good because that's going to cool off that that you boiled and make this truly raw milk yogurt okay last step before you put the lid on and forget this for the next 24 hours you're going to add your culture do not add your culture after you've boiled and dissolved the gelatin add your milk first because you will kill this culture okay the one i use is called aby-2c i don't know if it'll focus in on that or if it won't but it's ABY-2C and I keep it in the freezer and for this size I use about an eighth of a teaspoon that's all you need so this little bottle right here will do 50 gallons so it's very economical you can find it online um, so that's all there is to that now I'm gonna stir that culture in Okay, last thing you're gonna do with this super easy recipe is you're gonna put your lid on and you're gonna put this in the sealing position uh, to keep that heat in because yogurt needs a certain temperature to culture you don't have to worry about it your display okay when you use your instapot to pressure it starts at the time you set and it counts down well on something like this it's gonna count up so mine is saying three minutes right now it's gonna count up until I set mine for 24 hours and like I told you that makes it gaps friendly and trim healthy mama friendly now mine is just whole milk raw milk so I'm gonna have some separation of the milk from the cream and I had not already separated it and skimmed the cream off so the cream is still gonna rise to the top in this if you're doing something like trim healthy mama where you're separating fats and carbs it will slide right off the top once you get to your once it makes yogurt, the cream's gonna be sitting right on top. It'll slide right off, really easy. And you can use that as cultured cream. You can make butter out of that. You can use it as sour cream. There's a lot of uses for cultured cream. So anyway, it's super easy. It's really good. It's just plain yogurt, really good for you. And it's a way to make raw milk yogurt. It's actually thick. All right, so it's been 24 hours. Our yogurt is done and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do now. It's went off and now it just says yogurt. So it's just kind of sitting there. And this is a pretty important step. You can see it still looks, I'm gonna shake it for you. That's the cream and whey sitting on top of it. It's pretty important at this step, you need to refrigerate it for a few hours and get it good and cold before you proceed with anything else. Really, it's even recommended before you eat any. It's, it's okay, but it's, it's warm and it's still pretty runny at this point. So I'm just gonna cover it with some plastic wrap, pop it in the fridge, and then after that, like I said, the cream will slide right off the top and you'll have a really healthy raw milk yogurt that's actually thick. Then you mix that with fruit or honey or whatever you prefer. Okay, so I told you how to wrap up the yogurt and now I'm gonna show you how to wrap up the lard. I started to just show you how to start them and tell you how they were gonna wind up, but I thought I'd just show you what I do. 
Okay, so these have been going about 24 hours. They're good and rendered. You could keep going if you want, but I've, it's rendered down a lot. So it honestly, it's just a convenient time for me to go ahead and strain it and jar it up. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do now. Okay, I'm gonna use this. This is my huge milk strainer and my stainless steel bucket that I use for straining my milk. I'm gonna have to sanitize these and run them through probably my dishwasher after this, but um, this is not the filter I use to filter milk. Let me just say that for my milk customers if they're watching. Um, but I am gonna use this stainless steel strainer and bucket. You're gonna have to strain it through something. You could, you could dip out what's left, the pieces of meat that go by different names, so. But what's left in there, you could dip out, but that's gonna be a little bit time consuming and I don't know how fine that's gonna work. But people use all different kinds of things to strain it, so here we go. All right, now this is hot. It's, it's basically hot grease, so you need to be careful. I'm really one to talk about being careful, aren't I? Oh yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna carefully, this strainer is huge, so it makes it easier for me, but I'm just going to carefully dump it in here. And try not to dump it on me. Okay, so it's a, it's a hot, greasy mess, that's for sure. All right, so I'm just gonna let that strain down, and then what is coming through is gonna be my lard. And I'm probably gonna have to help it along a little bit by stirring and getting that up off the filter. When I start, it goes through a lot faster. Now there's recipes and nourishing traditions for keeping this part and putting it in salads and different things. So use your own judgment if you wanna keep that and use it or not. I'm gonna dump the next one in there. This one's bigger and heavier. I'll try to grab it where it makes this pouring easier. Okay, so I'm just gonna let that kind of strain through there. And then I'll jar it up and show you what it looks like. Okay, so here is the lard rendered, strained, and jarred up. That's three quarters of a gallon. I'm probably gonna have two of those on this go around. I've got some more lard over here to do, you can see, for this batch. Um, so I put it in this glass jar. A lot of people don't like to freeze in glass. They say it will break. I've not had that problem so far. It may burn me one of these days and then I'll change. But for now, I've got a lot of gallon glass jars and three quarter gallons, so I'm gonna continue to use those. I'm gonna let this fully cool before I put it in the freezer. So I hope that helped you out. Um, it's not hard. That's just a couple things I do in the kitchen, the yogurt and the lard. Uh, I've actually got some more things going on, so I'll probably be putting another video out in the next couple days about some more things I've got going in the kitchen. So stay tuned. Thank you to everyone who's new here. Go to our 1000 subscriber challenge video, check that out. Um, that's the video you need to comment on and hopefully we're gonna be having a drawing soon to give some stuff away. So go check that out. We're thankful to have each and every one of you and until next time, God bless.